Hello chess lovers, Sorn here and in this video we are going to analyze another very interesting game. In the final stage of the game some dramatic events are going to unfold, that's why keep up watching up to the end please. This is a game played between two American chess players, Walter Sean Brown is playing against James Tarion. Uh, this game was played back in 1969 at USA Championship under 18. Uh, Brownie would earn Grandmaster's title a year later in 1970 and Tarion earned Grandmaster's title in 1976. In the earlier I have already covered a game played by Brownie. Uh, it was his game against Christiansen. If you have missed it, the link I will pin in the comment section. And when it comes to James Tarion, if you remember in 2017, uh, Tarion made a huge noise by beating former world chess champion Vladimir Kramnik at Isle of Man International Masters Tournament. Uh, with this being said, now let's go for the game. So, Brown is on the white side and he opened up with e4 to which Tarion answered with e6. Tarion goes for French defense and we have Tarash variation against French. Knight c6. This is a so-called Guimard defense. I personally don't like this continuation because you are hindering the movement of this c pawn. And yeah, later again you have to make a move with your knight, lose a precious time and go for c5 in order to open up your position, uh, somehow get a counterplay and challenge opponent centered. Uh, anyways, we have knight c6, knight gf3, knight f6 provoking e5 which was made in the game and bishop d3. When you're making bishop d3 move, uh, black is getting a chance of moving away the knight from c6 with a tempo, something which we see in our game. That's why in view of this knight before it was better first to play c3, you know. Instead we have bishop d3, by the way c3 is the uh, main move, there came knight b4 in order not to give up this bishop, white moved it back. Later uh, this bishop can play a very important role when trying to exploit the weaknesses of light squares around black king and then we have c5, c3, knight, c6. So black is doing okay, no problem at all. It's black to move c takes d4, c takes d4 and this time black is undermining white center from the king side, a standard move of course. Knight goes to b3, bishop d6, bishop g5, queen f7, bishop h4 and black is also castling king side. Bishop d3, so white's dark squared bishop is occupying a very important diagonal. And already knight g5 can be a threat, right? That's why black played h6, queen e2, and there we have it, another standard idea in, in French Tarash. Black is going for e5. Uh, something which is allowing to activate his pieces and open up the light squared bishop's diagonal. Bishop g3, uh, well if e4 then bishop takes d6 now. Yeah, e4 won't give you anything. Moreover this can lead to simplifications and so we have an equality on the board. So that's why after bishop g3 instead of e4 we have queen f6. Uh, already, yes, now e4 can be a threat, d takes e5, knight takes e5, takes, takes, rook a e1. Looks like that white is okay to see knight takes d3, but instead black played knight c6. Strange, why not knight takes d3? The problem with this knight c3 is that now by playing bishop b1, White could create a very nasty queen d3 threat. But instead, after knight c6, we have queen h5. Knight e7, rook e3, bishop f5, neutralizing white's light squared bishop. Uh, once again, we have an equality on the board, nothing special, and so we have the exchange of both bishops. Rook a c8, rook e3. King h8, knight e6, rook f6. 
Rook f6 is a mistake. Betcher was playing rook f5. Let's see what's the problem with this move. Can you guess white's next move? Yes, white's upcoming move is very easy to find. There came knight takes g7. A huge blunder by James Tarian. White's idea is simple. If king takes g7, then rook takes e7. And then this queen g4 is coming. And, uh, yeah, white is getting a winning position with an extra pawn. Also, black's position is uh, hopelessly exposed. Uh, after knight takes g7, we have d4 move in the game. And now, instead of making the winning rook g3 move, white made a mistake, played knight e8. Something which is losing. Now, from a winning position, white is making a losing move. And so, yeah, now James Tarion will turn the table. It's black to move. How will you proceed? Uh, by the way, I want to show you how the evaluation changes. Take a look at this position. So, in here, white is winning. Plus three advantage, right? Rook g3 is the move. Instead, I changed plus two, but again, white has a huge advantage, uh, more than two pawn advantage, and rook g3 could really allow white to dominate. Instead, we have uh, knight e8, after which take a look, it's black who is winning. Here we go, d takes e3 was the move made by James Tarion, a queen sacrifices on the board. You should accept the queen sacrifice. E takes f2 check. King h1. Of course, you can't play rook takes f2. A checkmate is coming. There is a back rank weakness. So king h1. Yeah, this pawn went really far right, guys. This isolated pawn really made a huge progress. What's happening? What's happening? And then what to play? Yes, yes, you are right. Rook c1. This is amazing, guys. The rook is untouchable because, again, there can be a pawn promotion with a checkmate to follow. White announced a check and black just covered his king. Queen e2, rook takes f1, queen takes f1, rook takes d6. This is amazing, guys. Black is winning, this pawn is untouchable and, yeah, there is nothing white can do. g3. Rook f6, already the threat is queen f2, that's why rook f6, and now black knight is coming. Just no way to stop it. King g2, knight e7, knight d5, knight e3, white resigned. Enough is enough. This is how the game ended, guys. A very, very nice and <laughs> dramatic finish. James Tarion managed to use his chance successfully. He just got one single chance. And he used it brilliantly. Amazing game. Hope that you enjoyed it. Feel free to share with your friends as well. And in the end, a simple chess puzzle. It's white to move and win the game. There is even a forced mate in four. And as usual, I wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.